Hi there, we're going to be talking about properties of exponents with parentheses today. We've got a couple of rules, a couple of, or a few example problems on a couple, and uh, hopefully this should be pretty straightforward. Our first rule says that if we have a parentheses raised to a power, everything inside is raised to that same power. So for instance, here I have 3a to the fourth power, so this is the same thing as 3 to the fourth power and a to the fourth power. This is very similar to our uh, distribution rules, which you should have seen before, um, but the only difference now is we have exponents instead of a number multiplied in front. The same rule can be applied whenever we have fractions, so I have y over x to the sixth power, and that's the same thing as y to the sixth power over x to the sixth power. So I just take each of the things inside the parentheses and raise them to the power that I have on the outside. My second rule is that if a power is raised to another power, then the powers are multiplied. So for instance here, I have 2 to the third power, but that is raised to the fourth power. Well, we know that if we have something raised to the fourth power, there's going to be four of them multiplied together. So that's the same thing as 2 to the third times 2 to the third times 2 to the third times 2 to the third. Well, if you remember your properties of multiplying uh, exponents with the same base, we just add our powers together. So I would just add 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Well, that's the same thing as 2 to the 12th. And if you notice, if I multiplied my original 3 power times the 4th power that I had outside the parentheses, I would have gotten 2 to the 12th. And that is our uh, second rule that we have for powers with um, parentheses here. So I'm going to go through, through some example problems, and hopefully these will make sense. We're just following these two uh, rules here with our uh, examples in the next couple of slides. So my first example here, I have a, b to the fourth, and that's all raised to the power of five. Well, I know that if I have an exponent, or if I have a base with no exponent shown, then that counts as being an exponent of one. So I really have a to the first and b to the fourth. And that's raised to the power of five. You don't always have to show this step. I'm just showing it for the first uh, time here since we haven't seen any examples like this before. And now I'm just going to multiply my exponent outside times the exponents I have inside. So I have 5 times by my exponent of 1, which will give me a to the fifth. And then I have 5 times my exponent 4, which should give me b to the 20th. And that's it. That's, it's that simple as long as you follow these rules. So let's go take a look at the second example. Now here I have 5x to the 1 half power, y to the third power, and that's all raised to the power of 6. So I'm going to bring my exponent of 6 on the inside and multiply it times each of the exponents that I have there. So there's no exponent shown on the 5, so that counts as 1, so I'm going to multiply the 6 from the outside of the parentheses times by the invisible one on the 5, and that's going to give me 5 to the power of 6. Now here I've got a fraction for an exponent. I've got x to the 1 half power. I'm still going to multiply. I'm going to multiply 6 times by 1 half, and if you work that out, you should get x to the 3rd power. like so. Then lastly, I have y to the third power. Well, this is pretty straightforward. We just need to multiply the power of 6 times the power of 3. That's going to give us y to the 18th power. So my final answer is 5 to the 6th power, x to the third power, and y to the 18th power.
with the third example here, now the power on the outside is a fraction. So I need to multiply that fraction times by all of the powers that I have on the inside. Well, if I have 8 to the first power, like that, let me make it a little darker, I have 8 to the first power, I have 1 times by 1 third. Well, that's just going to be 1 third, so I'm going to have 8 to the 1 third power. If I multiply 12 by 1 third, that's going to be the same thing as 12 divided by 3, which is going to give me a to the fourth power. And lastly, b to the ninth power raised to the one third power. Nine times by one third is the same thing as nine divided by three. So I'm going to get b to the third power. And eight to the one third, a to the fourth, and b to the third will be my final answer. With the next example, now I've got a fraction, and this doesn't really change how we're doing things. It just changes where the positions are of our uh, numbers and our variable. So I've got 5x over 7 raised to the second power. So I'm going to bring that 2 in and raise everything on the inside to the second power. So I'm going to have 5 to the second power, x to the second power, over 7 to the second power. And if you wanted to replace 5 squared with 25 and 7 squared with 49, that, that can work. Um, either, either answer is acceptable. With this last example on this slide, we notice we have a negative power. Well, let's go ahead and multiply our negative power times um, all of our powers on the inside, which is basically just going to have all of uh, the numbers and variables on the inside to the power of negative 4. We've done this, but we're not quite finished with this problem because, as you should remember, all of the answers that we've been getting have had positive exponents for all of their um, final answers. So if you remember about our negative exponents, we need to flip negative exponents either from top to bottom or bottom to top in order to make them positive in any of our fractions. So if we're going through the same steps that we did before, I'm going to circle everything that's got a negative exponent, which in this case is everything that I have. So the 4 to the negative 4th is going to go to the bottom and both the 3 to the negative 4th and the a to the negative 4th are going to go to the top. Now if I write out my new fraction, in the numerator I know I'm going to have 3, but I'm going to change my power now to positive, so I'm going to have 3 to the positive 4, and then same thing with the a. I know the a went to the top, and I'm going to change my power now to be positive. So I'm going to have a to the positive fourth. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have 4. And when I flip this to the denominator, it's going to change my power to positive. So I'm going to have 4 to the positive fourth power. Like that. So this 3 to the fourth, a to the fourth, divided by 4 to the fourth, is my final answer. All right, I've got some, some more examples here just for some extra practice. We've got another negative exponent. But since this one isn't a fraction, I think it's a little bit easier to do. We can, um, since it doesn't start with a fraction, it's a little bit easier to do. We should remember that any time we have a negative exponent that isn't a fraction, we can write that over 1 for starters. Like that. Well, I know that if the whole thing is raised to the negative second power, I can bring that to the bottom and make it positive. So, 
I'm going to have my fraction bar and 12 AB to the seventh raised to the now positive 2, because remember, it goes to the bottom, power becomes positive, and then a 1 on top. Now I'm going to slide this over so I can finish the problem. I'll slide it back in a second. So I had 1 over 12AB7 squared, like that. I think you guys can read that. So now I'm going to bring the second power inside the parentheses, just like we've been doing. So I'm going to have 12 squared, a squared, and now b to the 14th power, because I multiply the 7 times by 2, and we still have the 1 on top of the fraction. So this is the answer for our problem here. Okay, so let's work on uh, these other ones here. We've got 5 to the 3rd, x to the 9, y to the 15th, and that's all raised to the power of 4. So I just need to multiply my powers here. So if I do that, I'm going to get 5 to the 12th, x to the 36th, and y to the 60th. as long as I did my mental math correctly. And that's it. Um, situations like this are really simple. All you have to do is multiply your powers. On the next example, I have x to the 6th over y to the 18th, and that's all raised to the 1 6th power. So I just have to multiply my powers here once again. I've got 6 times by 1 6th, which is the same thing as 6 divided by 6, and that's going to give me x to the power of 1. On bottom, I'm multiplying 18 times by 1 6, and the same thing as 18 divided by 6, and that'll give me y to the 3. So if I simplify just a little bit more, I get x over y to the third power, like that. All right, and the last example I have here. This is just going to be raising each of the pieces inside the parentheses to the power we have on the outside. Very simple. I will have 11 to the fifth, a to the fifth, over 23 to the fifth power. And there's nothing else I can do to simplify this, so that's sim that is our answer. I hope these have been helpful for you. And I hope that you feel like you've learned something from these. Uh, we will be doing more examples of these problems together in class. And um, be ready for tomorrow. Thank you.